You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Last night, one of the states Joe Biden won was Alabama, where, of course, uh, my next guest, he, of course, also won the Democratic nomination. He is waiting to figure out who he's going to be against. Will it be former Senator Jeff Sessions? Will it be former uh, coach Tommy Tuberville? Joining us right now is uh, Senator Doug Jones. Senator, how you doing? I'm doing good, Roland. Thanks for having me today. All right. So uh, you don't know who you're going to run against. You've got crazy and really crazy. <laughs> Those are the two choices, Tuberville and Jeff Sessions. Uh, what do you make of what's happening on the Republican side? You know, it, it has been really sad to watch, to be honest with you, to see how low the Republican Party in Alabama has gone with, with this race. I mean, you've got Sessions, who is such a divisive character. He's divisive in Alabama, obviously, 20 years as a senator and couldn't get but a little over 30 percent of the vote. Uh, and then you got uh, to Coach Tuberville, who is just— his views have gotten to be so extreme, it's just unbelievable. So, you know, we're feeling really good about where we are. We're doing all the things that we said that we would do, and you and I have talked about before, talking about the kitchen table issues and things that matter to all people in Alabama. That's our that's our whole mantra is one Alabama. So we feel really, really good. Your court, you are going to have a tough re-election. The bottom line is you won the special election. You're running against Judge Roy Moore. Last night he placed fourth uh, in that primary. Uh, he was, you know, this boogeyman folks were looking at. But one of the issues that we talked about when we, I was there in uh, December for our Black Journalist Board <laughs> meeting when you and I had lunch, you got 900,000 people who are unregistered in Alabama, 500,000 African-American. What is being done on the ground uh, to get those folks registered before the November election? You know, there's a lot of things that are happening right now. We've got some folks that are starting to do that. The most significant thing that we've had to develop right now is that we've, you know, we've finally got a Democratic Party in Alabama. We have for so long have just kind of wandered in the wilderness without a party to, to lead us uh, and to do those kind of things. But now we have a, a real viable Democratic Party. We've put young people in there. We've got the first African-American chair, Chris England, uh, that is in there. And we're beginning to raise money for that party to put that infrastructure in place. So we've got the party infrastructure that's doing really good. People on the ground in every county is doing well. We've got folks looking at making sure that we have um, things that are happening. You know, Stacey Abrams and Fair Fight is going to be in Alabama. There are any number of groups that are both registering re-registering, because that's something else we've got to do because of voter purging, and trying to get people engaged. Getting folks engaged is something that we're going to be focused on uh, in the next six or eight months, right in, up until uh, November. I was there when I was there, and even at, since then, I've talked to a number of people down in Alabama. Uh, you got some folks down there who are mad at you, this whole deal with Joe Reed. Have y'all resolved that? Uh, because, again, I've heard from black folks who say, you know, oh, my goodness, you know, these things shouldn't be happening. But the bottom line is this here. This is about winning. It's about winning statewide. And Alabama, in many ways, is like my native Texas, where Republicans control all the statewide offices. At the end of the day, you got to put together a some kind of sensible coalition to get over the top. Well, you know, look, I have had nothing but good things to say about Dr. Reed and all the things he has done for the, the folks in Alabama. Uh, but the fact is, we needed a change in leadership. And I think that that, would, that change was evident yesterday when, you know, Joe Biden was able to come in there with only one endorsement from one group and win over 62 percent of the total vote in Alabama. So, I, you know, there's a lot of things that have been changed. But I think people are going to start rallying around now the party. Uh, we've got everything out of the way. Folks are excited about this Democratic Party. And I think if you look at what happened yesterday in, in Alabama, uh, even though Dr. Reed and his group did not endorse Joe Biden, they endorsed Mike Bloomberg, the fact is there was a lot of excitement among the ADC folks that he represents, that Dr. Reed represents. There was a lot of excitement in the, uh, the African-American community in general. Because, you know, it's just like Jim Clyburn said in South Carolina. You know, we know Joe in Alabama. He knows us. He speaks to us. He listens to us. And so that kind of transcends that. And I think after yesterday's vote, I think everybody's going to see that we've got some really major opportunities. We had 50,000 more people voting in our primary this year than they did in 2016. 
Uh, and that's a good sign, too. There's a lot of excitement rolling. I think we're going to all come together and get ready for November. I do have to ask you about the developments. Michael Bloomberg dropping out of the race. Joe Biden solidifying support. Elizabeth Warren is now deciding what she wants to do. I suspect by Thursday or Friday she's going to drop out. You can't come in third place in Massachusetts where you're a senator. You can't come in fourth place in Oklahoma where you grew up and then fourth place in Texas where you went to college and somehow have a plausible path. Uh, and so going forward, you're likely going to have Biden versus Sanders. What do you see happening there? Can, si can Sanders grow his base? And can Biden run a much more structured, focused, energetic campaign? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think that Senator Sanders has had trouble growing that base. I think we're seeing that in the numbers now where he didn't even perform as well in Vermont as he did in 2016. Uh, his supporters are very excited. They are, are, are loyal to him. Uh, but I think the fact of the matter is what you saw happen yesterday was Joe beginning to, to, to get the wind at his back, to solidify the vote. I mean, it, it, think about this. It was a really um, a, a amazing night when you can carry both Alabama and Texas and Tennessee, as well as the state of Massachusetts and Minnesota. That's a, that shows you the strength of a, a Biden uh, of a Biden coalition, a diverse strength that, that he's got across the country. I believe he's going to do really well in the upcoming primaries. I think he's going to do real well in Florida. I think he'll do well in Michigan. The, obviously, this is not over with yet, and I'm not saying that at all. But I think at the, if I'm reading the tea leaves, I think that Joe Biden is going to be the nominee. I've said that all along, and I still believe it. And I think he'll end up being the president of the United States as well. All right. Senator Doug Jones of Alabama, we really appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Look forward to having you back on Rollmart Unfiltered. Thank you, buddy. Always good to see you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, folks, back to that Rollmart Unfiltered video in just one moment. So a lot of y'all always asking me about terms, some of the pocket squares that I wear. Now, I don't know. Robert don't have one on. Nope. Now, I don't particularly like the white pocket squares. I don't like even the silk ones. And so I was reading GQ magazine a number of years ago, and I saw uh, this guy who had this, this pocket square here, and it looks like a flower. Uh, this is called a shibori pocket square. This is how the Japanese manipulate the fabric to create this sort of flower effect. So I'm going to take it out and then place it in my hand so you see what it looks like. And I said, man, this is pretty cool. And so I tracked down the, it took me a year to find a company that did it. Uh, and so uh, they make these about 47 different colors. And so I love them because, again, as men, we don't have many accessories to wear. So we don't have many options. Uh, and so this is really a pretty cool uh, pocket square. Now what I love about this here is you saw uh, when it's uh, in, in the pocket, you know, it gives you that flower effect like that but if I wanted to also unlike other because if I flip it and turn it over it actually gives me a different type of texture and so therefore it gives me a different look so there you go so uh, if you actually want to uh, get one of these shibori pocket squares we have them in 47 different colors all you got to do is go to rollingthismartin.com forward slash pocket squares all right so first of all that graphic is way too small so uh, tomorrow we're gonna run it right down here all across the screen so it's rollingthismartin.com forward slash pocket squares all you got to do is go to my website uh, and you can actually uh, get this now for those of you who are members of our bring the funk fan club there's a discount for you to get our pocket squares. That's why you also got to be a part of our Bring the Funk fan club. Uh, and so that's what we want you to do. And so it's pretty cool. So if you want to jazz your look up, you can do that. In addition, uh, y'all see me with some of the feather pocket squares. My sister who is a designer. She actually makes these. They're all custom made. So when you also go to the website, you can also order one of the customized uh, feather pocket squares uh, right there at rollingsmartin.com forward slash pocket squares. So please do so. And of course, uh, at goes to support the show. And again, if you're a Bring the Funk fan club member, you get a discount. This is why you should join the fan club. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. If you want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it.